The Dallas Cowboys lost three starters on Friday. How will they replace Tyron Smith and others moving forward? We will get to that on this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. 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 Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Lena McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we are discussing the mass exodus of Cowboys starters that left, really starting last week, but we got three starters that left on Friday. Let's start with Tyron Smith, who you and I thought had a chance to actually return to the team the further that we got on in free agency. Instead, he signs a deal with the Jets. How surprised were you that Tyron decided to leave? Well, that's a good question because honestly, you know, uh, we shouldn't have been that surprised, right? Because we got very much a heads up that this was happening and that, 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 you know, he wasn't likely to come back. Uh, but I think a lot of us kind of, you know, heard whispers and, 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 you know, we're reading tea leaves of, of, of things coming like, and it, it, it seemed like there was definitely, I would say more than just a, uh, uh, a window uh, for for Tyron to come back, uh, yeah. and that they that they it, it felt like that there was even positive momentum, you know, towards towards Tyron coming back. There, I, I, there were conversations between his agent and the team, and um, I, I think that the Jets deal uh, uh, was surprising and and kind of caught everyone uh, out of the blue a little bit. There's been some very different reporting about this whole situation, but. I, I think so we have some of the numbers actually. It's so yeah, it's six and a half million dollar base salary. And then I believe it's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars per game that he plays moving forward. And then there's also a I think there's a roster or a bonus of I think a million dollars if he plays more than fifty one percent of the snaps. So it's the base salary is low. The incentives are really high, and some of that depends on what the Jets do as a team, but I actually don't think the contract is outlandish at all. No, no, I, I don't think so either. I, I think for the Cowboys, they've clearly had a number in mind and they were working towards uh, adjusting it, you know, uh, and talking to Tyron. And I, then I think the Jets came in and gave this number and, it, you know, it was, I, I think what it is is the guaranteed money, right? Like, I mean, you know, I, I think the Cowboys wanted to kind of pay him on a, on a, as you're playing sort of basis. And, and Tyron was looking for just one more kind of, uh, guaranteed chunk of of change, and uh, you know, I, I think that that ultimately was the difference. And you know, like this is tough. Like Tyron Smith is one of my favorite players who's yeah, ever played for the Cowboys, and uh, you know, it's 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 always difficult when you're you see the, a player like that walk to another team at the end of his career when you, you just expected them to always be a Cowboy. Uh, but I think the Cowboys, you know, clearly had a number in mind here. And after, you know, a certain point, uh, they were willing to kind of let Tyron walk to see if they could, you know, kind of move forward to what's next at the position. Um, I, I think the Cowboys were surprised by this, but they also had a pretty firm number on what they wanted to spend here. And uh, they they knew that if the number got higher than this, then they were going to use it as an opportunity to try to see what was next and move forward and kind of start working on what the future of, of the offensive line is going to look like. I think there's also a belief that the Cowboys might have caught lightning in the bottle uh, in a bottle a little bit last year with Maybe. Tyron's health, right? Being that healthy and playing that well on the flip side. I hate it. I, I, I yeah. hate that Tyron Smith is not finishing his career as a Cowboy because I man, when he was playing last year, was there a better left tackle in the NFL? He was incredible, you know. I mean, especially as a pass protector, there was very few players as a pass protector that was as good as he was. And uh, yeah, but I, I think you know, it's 
as, as upset as we all are about this, I, I think it's reasonable to remember how we feel or how we felt about Tyron Smith at the beginning of each season when we start lining up our, our, our depth charts that, you know, one of them basically for the last five or six years, the, uh, the Cowboys have had a field, basically an extra starting position at tackle because the, of the just, you know, almost scheduled uh, uh, missing games that, that Tyron Smith had each year. I mean, he was good for missing three or four games a, a, a year for, five or six years in a row or something like that. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's not a mark against Tyron. He was absolutely worth it. But ultimately, you know, there is a point when that's only going to get worse and not better. And, and, and that the Cowboys were able to uh, uh, get, uh, get a, a kind of rare opportunity to, to have Ty Tyron Smith to kind of get through that entire season without, you know, too much of a setback as compared to the previous years. That doesn't guarantee you that that's going to happen in the future. In fact, no. you know the age kind of sort of guarantees that it's not going to happen in the future. So uh, I understand it's it's not easy. Like it certainly isn't like something that I think that was a simple decision for them. But it's 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 tough when you're going to now be having to guarantee him this money. You have no real guarantees that uh, that that he won't miss several games during the season. Um, and, and the Jets are willing to take that risk. I mean, the Jets are at a spot where they need to fix their offensive line. They they're willing to to take that risk for for their you know their talent that they have currently. They're they're loading up for this year with Aaron Rodgers because they don't know like you know <laughs> if he can survive another injury. I so um, I, I think for the Cowboys, it's a tough, hard decision. But it, as much as it makes me tear my hair out, and I hate it, and I hate the Cowboys for not re-signing him. There are aspects of it that I understand in the sense that, look, if you're trying to, you know, really kind of turn this thing around for the future a little bit, you, you don't want to like commit to an aging Tyron Smith who uh, you just have no guarantees that he's going to be as healthy as he was last season. No, but at the same time, and this is what I think is a little frustrating is that Tyron Smith coming out of the 2022 season was healthy, like no surgeries, didn't need to do anything in the off season. I think that's why he played so well in 2023 he wasn't having to rehab from any big injury right yeah. and he practiced almost all through training camp when he i mean when he practiced he was really good he, there was no injuries he was dealing with in camp played most of the season and got through that season without having to have a major surgery or anything so i do wonder like the last two years of having a healthy off season may and you know going into this year maybe that does help extend his career a little bit i actually think this move tells us a lot about the Cowboys kind of moving forward. And I, yeah. I'm so tired of talking about the Cowboys being all in and that Me kind of too. stuff. I just think they don't want to invest any more future draft or future cap space into this team. They kind of want this team to play it out and maybe make adjustments in 2025 when you need to. Yeah. And I mean, look, I mean, I think that what this team is looking at is that they're going to have to be paying their top five high, highest paid players probably all in a row here. And, and, you know, and they're already in the middle of it, right? They've already paid Trayvon Diggs. Uh, they're they're going to have to pay Dak again, CD Parsons. You guys know the names, right? So uh, they just can't afford to, you know, not be uh, judicious about how they hand out these contracts. Ty Tyron Smith is a, a cornerstone uh, player, but at, the, at, you know, at this age with his injury history, like what you can't afford necessarily is to try to add a situation that's going to add more dead money to your cap in the yeah. years 2025 and when you're trying to kind of potentially reset this a little bit more. So uh, I think the Cowboys made a hard decision that they had to plan for the future. Again, ignore the all in. Like it's if anything, the the body language has shown you that this is a, that this is a team setting up a future seasons right now. Um, so I, I think that the Tyron Smith situation and the fact that they have a pretty defined limit that they have with spending from Tyron Smith, it kind of shows you exactly the, the direction this team is trending for the 2024 season. Just sucks. I love watching Tyron Smith. I was really excited to see one more season of Tyron Smith and Zach Martin together. Didn't happen, but I'll be rooting for, for Tyron with the Jets. I, I can't wait to see what he looks like protecting Aaron Rodgers. Tyron wasn't the only longtime Cowboy that moved on on Friday. We had two other uh, veterans and big-time contributors get cut. We will discuss them 
next. This episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold from one year from the date of your first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. On March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern, be the first to get local insights from the MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, Landon, let's talk about Michael Gallup, who the Cowboys cut on Friday. They designated him as a post-June 1 release. Uh, we kind of knew this was coming after the Cowboys let Michael Gallup seek a trade. Obviously, <laughs> nothing happened there. Um, what went wrong with the Michael Gallup experiment? Hmm. You know, it's tough. It, it Clearly, this is a guy that, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, what he was able to do early on his career, right? Um, and and what he was able to kind of accomplish as you know, as, uh, wide receiver is not a position that it's easy to kind of uh, uh just pop in and, and be a, a successful as a rookie, right? Like, I mean, and if you and if it is, like, uh, then usually you are kind of an elite player, like one of these top end players that gets drafted at the top end of the first round or somewhere in the middle of the first round, right? Um, and, and for Gallup to kind of come in and perform the way he did early in his career, like really was eye opening. And I think it showed uh, 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 an incredible amount of maturity and, and development. I think the problem um, was that ultimately his game is uh, was a high variance game. You know, it was a he's a down the field receiver. He's a 50 50 ball catcher. That's what, where he made his, his kind of living. Uh, and he didn't seem to be able to successfully kind of translate his game outside of that. And then on top of that, you had the injury situation, which set him back and and, and really kind of hurt his development as of of, of more a- parts of his game, right? Of, of of being more of a slant guy or, or or having aspects of his game that he could use outside of just being a, a, a guy who runs nine balls and could go up and get catch the ball and and make tough catches. And so. Uh, you know, when time came to to kind of figure out what to do at the wide receiver position, the Cowboys thought that they were still had a young, talented wide receiver that they were going to be able to get on the cheap because of the injury. Um, and and then what happens is that after he came back from the injury, he just wasn't the same player. His nope. knee never kind of uh, uh, you know got the trust in it the way that he wanted to until probably a whole year after he was back. And at that point, it was too late. You know, there was, his role had already been diminished so much, and he just, you know, he he showed you some stuff, and he, you know, ironically enough, he showed you some stuff re- that in his most recent games, like his last three games or whatever, including that playoff game, was some of the best football we've seen him play in a long time. Uh, but unfortunately, it was a little bit too little, too late, and after you know, kind of signing that deal, guaranteeing him that much money, the Cowboys just simply could not afford to pay him that kind of money for that little production. And even if he had bounced back and had a really great season this year, I just don't think that even a, what that looks like a bounce back great season for Gallup from where he is right now 
is worth anything close to what he was getting ready to be paid. And so it, the writing was clearly on the wall. Uh, the Cowboys tried to, you know, su suggest that there was a trade happening. No one was trading for that contract, yeah. that production. Uh, so this was, this was, uh, you know, very obvious writing on the wall sort of situation that, that has now come to fruition. So there's a couple of things here. Um, when he suffered the injury, I think the Cowboys thought they were getting a value because, they thought if he was healthy, he might have gotten seventeen to eighteen million dollars a year on the open market. I, I didn't, I don't necessarily agree with that logic. I don't think he did, but they were, they were paying him like he get he, they got a discount after it. I also think you should be very cautious about paying these contested catch receivers, yeah, because or drafting them I mean, or, or drafting them because they're just so high variance. I, I want to give you some numbers. These are from Pro Football Focus from the last three seasons. So this would be. Before the injury, uh, the season after, then the 2023 season where, you know, he was a full year removed. Yeah. Separation percentage, sixth percentile, 94th out of 100 qualifying receivers. Separation percentage versus single coverage, eighth percentile, 82nd out of 89 qualifying receivers. Yards after the catch, uh, 14th percentile, 83rd out of 97 qualifying receivers. If – if, if you're not making plays after the catch and you're not getting open, it's really hard to build a consistent offense around that player. And I I think especially with Dak and I think especially Mike McCarthy's offense, there's just not that interested in throwing that many go balls. They would rather be, you know, throw the, the five to 10 yard passes to be a little bit more efficient. There just wasn't a role for Michael Gallup in this offense. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're going to be playing, you know, he he essentially when we've talked about this before was essentially playing that X spot, right? And so there's there's you know four or five routes that you really kind of have to master to sort of be able to create the 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 variance of your route running in order to fool cornerbacks. Because if otherwise, if you're just like good at go, at running nine routes and 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 kind of contested catch situations. And, and on top of that, you're not like exceptionally fast because Gallup isn't exceptionally fast. He's just very talented at high pointing the ball and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, has strong hands and can get up and go up and get it. But like if, if quarterbacks can anticipate that you're the, you're, you're running a nine route almost every time, it's too easy they're not going to gonna give deference to like uh, the eight route that you should be running or, 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 you know, the sort of short slants. Um, and if you're not going to make them pay when you do run those routes, uh, you've kind of you've kind of get, taken away all the tools that you would need uh, in a uh, savvy way to kind of create space it, since you're not you know a physical specimen that's able to create space with an explosive with explosive movement right like like when you're not that type of player you have to go the Jerry Rice route of getting open right you have to be so good at making your stems look exactly the same no matter what the route is. That a cornerback has no idea what 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 you're running until you uh, you make the cut, and, and at that point you've already had the separation. Gallup, that's the kind of player, the kind of skill that Gallup needed to develop. But because of the injury, because of whatever, that just never happened. And the only oh. thing, and then the, the, the lack of explosiveness, unfortunately, also sapped him of of really his 50 50 catchability as well. So at that point, you know, he didn't have anything to hang his hat on. Uh, and I think it it was you know th that compliant by the fact that the Cowboys had clearly moved on with with Tolbert and and and, and was just ready to move on. It just spelled the end of 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 Gallup's career with the Cowboys. I really hope that he goes somewhere, you know, get, signs on with a vet deal or something, gets an opportunity to kind of start fresh, and 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 I, I think he can still be a a, a valued NFL receiver. I, agree. I just don't know that he's the you know or at least not moving forward. That the kind of player that that's you know that signed that contract originally. No, no, he he's you can't pay him that type of money, and I don't think you can have him be a number two receiver either. Like he's just past that point of his career. But if you just need like a suitable outside receiver that can go, get, you know, do some some go passes, you know, go balls and that kind of stuff, I do think he can still have value. He's only twenty eight years old, so yeah. I'm hoping for Michael Gallup's sake that he he kind of catches on with the veteran quarterback that's a little bit more willing to throw those kind of passes, but yeah. we'll see. So what's the plan to replace him? Would you just assume that it's CD lamb, Brandon cooks, and then more of Jalen Tolbert this year? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like 
I don't know that we <laughs> there's not much to talk about with replacing him because we've seen a lot of him already kind of being replaced. Right? He was getting replaced by Jalen Brooks by the end of the year. So I, I tend to think that you know you'll see kind of more of what we've seen, right? I think you're gonna see these young guys that we've we've seen previously get more opportunity, Jalen Brooks. I think you're gonna see more, even more of of uh Tolbert. You're gonna see even more of of these other kind of guys getting mixed in. And and then I think that you'll you'll likely see a, a draft pick, you know, as well to kind of fill in maybe not even that role. Well, actually. I wouldn't be shocked if it was that role. I wouldn't be shocked if it was a uh, a true X receiver who can kind of go and run those routes and, and, and at least give you a little bit more to consider on the outside when, when he's kind of isolated by himself on that side. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, we've seen the replacement plan. I think it's probably just more of leaning into what we've seen and then maybe getting one more young body to get in yep. there, someone who's maybe a true X. All right, so Michael Gallup was the third-round pick for the Cowboys in the 2018 draft. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the first-round pick in that draft and what the Cowboys have done there. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. So, right before we jumped on the show, we mm -hmm. got the news that. Leighton Van Der Esch has medically retired. The Cowboys released him on Friday before a roster bonus kicked in. Um, this was the way that things were trending uh, for a while, but what are your thoughts about Van Der Esch hanging up? Well, I'll say this. The first thing I'll just speak personally. Um, Leighton was the Cowboys draft pick uh, the year that I was at the draft uh, in hmm. Dallas. And, um, I actually got a chance to talk with him right after he got drafted. Uh, did a little bit of interview with with, with Katie Drummond and uh, and uh, uh, Patrick Walker. Uh, it was this is shout out to those guys. Um, and I think the first thing that 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 kind of and listen, keep in mind, I've been going to training camp for for ten years or however long it's been at that point. Um, I, I think the first thing that that came to mind is when he walked up. He is enormous. He's he is. enormous. Like, I mean, that was the thing. It wasn't even, I mean, I've, like I said, I've stood next to professional linebackers before. I've stood next to offensive linemen. I, 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 the fact that he was a linebacker, was a rookie, was just shocking to me because he was just, he was, he looked like he was 280 pounds and he was 6'6, six, six, right? Mm -hmm. um, super nice guy and, and came out. And look, I mean, I think a lot of people were critical of him early and the critical of the pick early. And and and, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the, the kind of media surrounding uh, the Cowboys just didn't ex anticipate it, uh, didn't expect it. And so they were shocked and not happy with it. But he came out and played fantastic football right away, was one of the best linebackers in football as a rookie um, and just played a different brand of football than the Cowboys had seen at linebacker in a little while. Um but the but the injury stuff was always there, you know. I mean, he had had a he had had a neck stuff, neck injury in college. There was concern about it. There was a reason he had actually fallen that far um, because of injury history stuff. And uh, you know, he had hurt himself. You know, uh, I think what was it? His second season, right? Yeah, Early 19. in the year. Yeah. yeah. And and um, missed you know the time. We were worried about then at the time whether he was going to come back because of how serious the the stuff had been previous to this. He was able to come back, able to actually play decent football once he was a little ways away from the injury. You start him start to come back and play better. I don't know that he ever kind of got back to the, the level that he was. No, but he was a good player. 
but he was a very good player. Yeah, a, a, a plus plus player on this defense for for the last few years. And then, of course, you know, they're playing San Francisco and Trent Williams gets him uh, in a kind of a toss situation. He hits his head on another player and he's down on the ground. And, and I think all of us, you know, had the worst thoughts in our minds. Right. And, and honestly, I remember thinking at the time, thank God he got up, you know, or thank God he was, yeah. you know, OK, like OK, relative to life and being able to walk and mm -hmm. all those things. Right. Uh, so to see, you know, him retire is, uh, disheartening and sad and saddening in a lot of ways, of course, but at the same time, um, I'm so glad that he is, uh, because I think I would have really been scared to watch him continue to play football. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to see anybody, especially someone who seems to be as good a guy as Layton is, uh, get injured to the point where, they can't enjoy their post football career. Um, so when he got hurt, I think as a player on the squad, we knew that it, that his career was over, or at least had an inkling that it wasn't. Balance, he was, yeah. yeah, he wasn't likely to come back. Um, so I, I think in that sense, we've been dealing with this for a long time. But now that it's official, I, I just you know want to kind of pass on my congratulations to Layton and and hope he has nothing but but great stuff in the future. He deserves it. Uh, and I really hope that he, if he so desires, I hope he sticks around with the team. He did so last year when he got injured. He was very, mm -hmm. very active with the team when he, when he really did not need to be. Um, and I think he is the kind of guy that honestly would, would, would transition into coaching. I think if, if, you know, given the opportunity. So uh, all, all the best luck to Layton. I have hopes that he does nothing but, you know, great stuff in the future. And, uh, I, I'm obviously sad that it ended up this way, but I'm thrilled that he had the career that he did. And uh, I'm ha I'm sad to see him go. It is uh, kind of cool that he did earn three contracts for the Cowboys because yeah. I think yeah. there was a point you're right in year two, where we wondered like, is he even going to make it to the end of his rookie deal? Cause you remember right. coming out of the draft, there was some concerns about that spinal stenosis. There was some That's teams right. that failed him. And I think that was a little bit of the disconnect between like, I think some fans were worried about that, but, he absolutely was, in terms of a player, was absolutely worth that 18th pick because oh, yeah. we just hadn't seen very many linebackers that are 6'5", 265 pounds that can run like he did. Uh, so for him to to come, you know, overcome the injury in 2019, and then by 2021 and 2022, he was playing really good football. Like, you go back and watch some of the playoff games. I mean, he was amazing in, in the playoff games. So, um as I, I I just read, I think it was a couple days ago that he just got married. Uh, him and his wife just had a, I believe it was a, a baby girl. Like now that he can go enjoy being a husband and be a dad and not have to worry about football. And I, I, I hope and pray for a full recovery for him because he's 28 years old. Like yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, and that's the thing, right? It's like, you see that sort of thing and, and, and NFL careers are short, you know, especially yeah. for guys who play high impact positions like linebacker and running back. So, uh, part of you is like wincing because, you know, obviously he had to medically retire, but, you know, he's retiring after getting three paychecks and, you know, hopefully still without too much of, you know, debilitating chronic injury stuff. So, uh, I, you know, I'm hoping that's a win for yep. him and I, I hope that he gets an opportunity to be a girl dad and enjoy all of that. Yep. So, uh, good for him. Yes. Cheers to Leighton Van Der Esch. Uh, all okay. right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, we're going to start with some draft profiles. So we're going to be talking interior offensive line, some guys that the Cowboys might be able to target in round one. So make sure you check out that. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Check out the show on YouTube as well. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow.